Hey guys, welcome to Crime Cafe. I'm so sorry there was no video last week. I am getting over a sickness and I still have a lingering cough. So I have some tea here and my cough drops and we're gonna get through this. I'm bringing you the case of Paige Dougherty and it is a, it's a doozy. So we're gonna dive right in. Um, if you haven't gotten your coffee or tea, uh, go ahead and grab that and let's get started. Ooh, thunder. A thunderstorm is coming. So dogs are barking, thunder's happening. The lighting is so dark in my room right now. It's insane. Um, but I only have a certain time period. I have the period of the time that my kid is at preschool. So we're gonna roll with it. We're just, we're gonna get it done. Paige Dougherty was a 15 year old who was born on April 17th, 2000. She lived with her stepdad and her mom, Andy and Pamela Monroe, and her younger sister and two younger brothers. She loved her family. They had a very tight knit family and she had a really, really close relationship with her mom. They were like best friends. Um, her mom always wanted to have that close, close friendship. Her mom was pretty young when she had her and they just had a different bond. Paige loved her stepdad as well. She made an entire post about him on Facebook saying that she, how much she loved him and how him coming into her life was the best thing that ever happened to her. So he was a really good stepdad. She had a really good life at home. She was happy. She had a great childhood. Paige was extremely petite. She was only 4'8 and she was just absolutely gorgeous. She loved makeup, loved makeup, loved hair, loved fashion. She wanted to work in that career area as when she got older. And she was described by many people as very respectful, sweet. She was kind, loving, she wouldn't hurt anything. She was just loved by everyone that she met. So on Friday, March 18th, 2016, Paige slept over her friend Lauren's house and they had a great night with their sleepover, but Paige had a weekend job. So when she wasn't going to school, she had a job at a hair salon, which she completely loved. And she had to get up for work that Saturday morning and head, head to work. Now her friend lived close to where Paige lived. So this, she would be taking the same route to work. It would take the same amount of time pretty much. So not a big deal for her to be sleeping at a friend's house when she had work in the morning the next day. Paige got up Saturday morning and she said goodbye to Lauren and she left for her job. It was about 20 minutes away. She had to walk to the bus stop to get there. And every single time she went to work and she walked to the bus stop, she would stop at these set of stores that were like outside. They're all connected and she would go to different ones to get a breakfast sandwich and take that with her on the bus and, and she would eat breakfast on the way to work. That day was like no other. She wanted to get breakfast and she walked towards the stores like she did every time she was on her way to work. So it was around 12 o'clock noon time when Paige's boyfriend Dylan was getting a little like worried about why she wasn't texting him back. He didn't hear from her the entire day and it was completely unlike Paige. He would usually hear from her in the morning time or throughout the day. Like he would, she would always, they just, they talked all the time. So him not hearing from her was weird, but her, especially her ignoring his text and calls to her, that was alarming for him. He got, he started, he was starting to get really worried. So he decided to give the salon where she worked a, a call and to see if Paige got there okay, if she was all right, if he could talk to her. And her boss actually told Dylan that Paige never made it to work that day. She, she never showed up. So he got really worried and he got off the phone. He immediately called Paige's mom, Pamela, to see if she was home. So no, she slept over in Lauren's last night and she had work this morning and Dylan said, I called work and she didn't show up. She didn't make it there. And that's when Pamela realized that she didn't hear from Paige either that day. And usually she does, and but it didn't dawn on her at all because, you know, she has other kids that she's handling at home and her daughter is a good kid. She 
hangs out with friends and goes to work and and doesn't like she never misses work and she's just very responsible and like older for her age so it didn't even dawn on her that she didn't hear from her so pamela thought maybe maybe her phone just died she did sleep at lauren's maybe she forgot to charge it she really wasn't concerned about why she didn't hear from her until dylan called and said that he didn't hear from her either and she's not at work so this is when Dylan went on and looked at Paige's social media and just to see if she was active at all and she wasn't. So they got really worried and they immediately called the police. Right away, Paige's friends and family started to post on social media and use that to see if anyone knew anything, if anyone saw her. They just wanted to get the word out, you know, describe what she was wearing, what she looked like where she would be and what vicinity she would be in just to get people to be on the lookout for her. But no one had any answers for them. No one saw her. A search team along with friends and family went out and searched the entire surrounding areas in Clyde Bank and they turned up with nothing. They found nothing, no signs of her at all. But they searched through the entire night and through that morning. Sunday morning came and still none of Paige's social media accounts were touched by her she wasn't on and no one heard from her or could get a hold of her so her family was completely terrified at this point because they knew that this wasn't a runaway um she wasn't like that she didn't she was fine she was happy there was no reason to suspect that she would just take off and her mom her mom knew that her mom said that immediately she had the worst gut feeling that this wasn't going to be good this wasn't going to be a good outcome for Paige and it was just so out of character for her that like something for this to be happening something bad had to happen to her Paige's friends and family set up a Facebook page called Help Find Page. So they were able to get her face, her information, what she was wearing, all the in all the information about her and details about her in one spot. And I mean, social media is a great tool to use when someone's missing. Volunteers made missing posters of her and hung them up everywhere. And they did that in the town that she lived in, on the route that she would be going to work and in the town that her work was located, which was about 20 minutes away from her home. So of course the police wanted to trace Paige's steps, everything that she would be doing that morning on her way to work, they wanted to do that. So they started from Lauren's house and they took the her normal route that she would be walking to the bus stop. And that's when they came upon the five little shops that she would usually go in to get breakfast every day. So they went and talked to them. One of the shops that they went into, they spoke to the owner, Ashi Armored, and he said that he saw Paige that morning. He saw her walking past the window to his shop and he actually waved at her and she waved back because she usually, she will she would go in different shops um, to, to get her breakfast. And the week before, the weekend before when she was going to work, she stopped in his shop and got some breakfast for herself. And this day she wasn't, she went past his shop and he assumed that she was probably going to Delicious Deli, um, which was right down from him. So that's what he told the police that he assumed that she was probably going there for breakfast that morning. And he knew that he saw her around 8.15 because he does the same exact routine every single morning for himself and his shop. He always preps the rolls around 8.15. So that's what he was doing and that's when he saw her out the window and so he knew that he saw her around 8 15 that morning ashi told the police that he did talk to the owner of delicious deli john lehman and he said that Paige was cheery and bright when he saw her in the morning like she always was nothing strange or unusual the police asked each shop if they had any cctv footage and the only one that had any outside of their shops was Ashi Armored. His footage was on a 12 day loop, so it would record for 12 days and then it would completely erase all of that and then start recording again for another 12 day period. The police just wanted about three hours around 8.15. They wanted three hours around that time. They figured it would be enough time to see Paige walk into a shop and walk out and they just wanted to see which direction that she went into when she left the shop. So they just wanted about three hours of 
time from that CCTV footage. So when the police got to the station, they were going to review this footage. And before they could even sit down and do that, they got a phone call. They received news that a dog walker was walking on a path and saw what he thought looked like human legs underneath a bush and he didn't go near it or anything like that but he wanted to call it in to the police and the police went and on monday march 21st 2016 48 hours after missing they identified the body as being a female and was just a half mile away from where Paige was last seen. While the body was taken into forensics, Paige's family was notified that a body was found of a female. Paige's mom just felt like she knew. She knew that that had to be Paige. The police said it was maybe a 20 year old girl and I was like, can it be Paige because she's, she's tiny, she doesn't look 20. You couldn't mistake her for a 20 year old, but I knew, I knew, I knew on the Saturday night that something had happened to her because she hadn't contacted me. But then when you hear in the Monday, that body's been found, like, and it's like five minutes over the back for us. I was like, it's got to be her. At the time of Paige's disappearance, there were only two other girls that were missing. So three girls all together, one was blonde and two of them were brown haired. And the body of the woman that was found had brown hair. I said, it's not the blonde girl because you wouldn't be at my door. I, I said, so when it if the other person shows up with the brown hair, then it's Paige. But they try and get you to think positive and things. But as a parent, it's your worst nightmare. So you 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 always go through everything. And I think it was about half past ten that night. The other wee girl showed up, mm -hmm. and I was like, I know it's definitely her. But got feeling. Uh huh. I as I say, I knew on the Saturday night. I kept saying to everybody, something's up where something's happened. You're going to, need to prepare yourself. And they're like, No, no, she'll show up. But she's just totally out of character. Totally. So. Paige's family was notified that they had to go down the following day to see if it was Paige, if they could identify the body. And that during that night, the other brown haired girl that was missing turned up safely at her home. So her family, Paige's family really, they were expecting it to be Paige. That Tuesday morning, Pamela and some other family members went to ID the body and hear her official cause of death. And Paige's official cause of death was from blood loss from stab wounds. And she was stabbed 61 times. And she had a total of 150 injuries to her body. Now, Pamela, Paige's mom, does believe that she saw her body. And she believed that the news outlets and the police weren't stating her real wound count her mom said that she had to have upwards of 500 stab wounds and she said that Paige had a hole in her neck from being stabbed like the size of a man's fist so she just she thought it was a lot more wounds than what was being publicly said the papers will say she was stabbed like 126 times or something like that but she was she stabbed a lot more and she was stabbed in more than just a knife there was a couple of weapons. Her mom also said that she was stabbed with multiple weapons and that she was right. Three different weapons were used on Paige. She had a hole like the size of your fist and her neck, like half her neck was gone. Like that's no an accident. You don't accidentally stab somebody in the region of 500 times. So they said like, it was slashes and defense wounds, but it, it, was, it was a lot worse than that. A lot and almost all of her injuries were on the left side of her body. Three weapons that were used, they believe, were scissors, a knife, and a screwdriver. She also had a lot of minor cuts and bruises from trying to defend herself. The day after Paige's body was found, a boy, a young boy, was all over social media in that area stating that he was the one who killed Paige. He was posting photos of himself with a bloody knife. One of the boy's friends reported the photos and the boys to the police and it did come out that um, the boys even like were FaceTiming friends, FaceTiming girls, showing a bloody knife, what looked like a bloody knife, and posting all these pictures and claiming that they, they murdered Paige. And they had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with it when the police looked into it. The boys didn't even know Paige. Which I think when you do something like that, you should get in trouble because you are wasting resources that could be on someone else, on a different suspect, or they could be out doing whatever, and they're wasting their time with these false 
claims and I just I think that there should have been some punishment for those boys because um, they wasted a lot of time. Now while waiting for this CCTV footage to come back to see if they found anything, um, the police wanted to talk to each individual shop owner. And because Paige went into uh, the Delicious Deli that morning, per Ashi Armored, he's, he's the one who said that she probably went in there because she passed his shop. Um, they wanted to go and talk to the owner, John Lehman. They asked John if he saw Paige that morning or if he, if, and if he spoke to her at all. And he said he didn't. He said that he didn't even recognize her picture. He didn't know who she was. And he blamed that on having so many customers. But I mean, I'm a person, I have a really hard time forgetting um, names. I'm terrible with names, but a face, I always remember a face. And I've worked in, you know, different shops and stuff like that. And when you have a customer, like a repeat customer that comes, um, it's kind of part of your job to recognize those customers, like these loyal customers and um, know their faces, know their orders if they get the same thing a lot of times. So like, I don't, you know, of course, that is like a red flag. I would think that the police took that as a red flag because she was there all the time. So it's strange for him to say that he didn't even know who she was. After a few hours of the police being there and asking tons of questions and um, just hanging around the shop, John Lehman changed his story. He did claim that he actually remembered Paige coming in and that she bought a sandwich like normal and she was acting like herself, nothing out of the ordinary. So it wasn't, anything that he could like remember off the top of his head because it was just a normal Saturday. So John said that she left his store. So he is the last person to have seen Paige at this point that the police know of. She got to the store where she usually gets breakfast and then she usually continues her walk to the bus stop. So the police left a delicious deli and they went to the bus stop and they were trying to see um, you know, the company that drove the buses and the, the people, but no one could remember Paige or anything like that. There's different drivers and different buses that come along. So they really couldn't tell if she got on the bus or not. But the police really believe that she didn't even make it to her bus stop because her body was found only a half a mile away from that shop area. So they assumed that she never made it to her bus, which would have taken her further away to her, her work. So the CCTV footage finally processed and you can see Paige walking towards and into the delicious deli that morning. They then wanted to see her come out of the deli, of course, because they want to see which direction that she's going in, but she never comes out of that deli. The police did take a three hour timestamp of that day. So they went back to Ashi Armored and asked for all of his footage, the 12 day loop. They wanted the entire thing and cause they needed to see when she was gonna leave. Now, as the footage started to be processed, it took John Lehman, the owner of Delicious Deli down to the police station because that's where she last was and they did not see her come out of his shop. So uh, they needed to get a, an actual statement from him and you know, ask him a few more questions. They asked John for the CCTV footage from inside his deli because every single shop had their own recording system inside their shops, but not outside. It was only Ashi Armored who had the one for outside. So Delicious Deli did have CCTV footage from inside the shop and they requested that they have that. And he, he gave it up. He didn't have an issue with that. He told them that they can have the video footage. When they, when the police, looked over this video footage, they never see Paige walk in the delicious deli. Now they know from the outside footage that she went into the delicious deli. She went in there. And from inside, there is absolutely no sign of her whatsoever. You never see her come into that store. And they ask him, we obviously see her going in. So why don't you have, why didn't your video pick her up in your store? And John didn't have a reason. He didn't have any anything to say to that, but obviously he tampered with the videotape. Now the police continue, continue to watch the CCTV footage from outside of the shops and they never ever saw Paige leave that deli. She walked in and she never came back out. But what they did find on that video footage was the owner of Delicious Deli, John Lehman, 
acting really, really strange. Around 10 a.m., so this is two hours after Paige enters the deli. So around 10 a.m., you could see John Lehman come out of his shop and literally run into one of the neighboring shops. And witnesses around that area said, like he closed down his shop. He shut the door and he had the close sign, like it was locked and he ran to um, the other store. He was in there for just a few minutes and then he came out with a bag and ran right back into his own shop. John then comes out of his shop again while it's closed. He doesn't have it open, he shut the shop down and he goes, his car is right across in the parking lot and he runs to his car and opens up the hatch um, and is like clearing a space in the back of his car. And in video footage that's, that has not been released, only police and Paige's family have seen it, John Lehman then goes back into his shop and he comes back out with a huge garbage bag. Um, one of the big black bags, he has one of those and he's carrying that and he's, you know, beelining for his, for his car. And he actually almost runs into a little kid on a bike with this garbage bag. Um, so you see him do that. And then he puts the bag into the back of his car, shuts it, gets in and quickly drives away. On Thursday, March 24th, John Lehman was arrested on the suspicion of Paige's murder. John was 31 years old. He was a father of two. One was a baby with his current wife, Katia, and he also had a nine-year-old daughter called Paige from a previous relationship. Now, before Paige was found, so when she was still missing, John actually went on the local news. You know how the news um, will go and like, interview people and stuff like that when things happen. Well, he was one of them because he was talking about how his shop was the last place that she was seen and how shocked he was about it. And he even mentioned how he had a little girl and how he, he couldn't imagine something like that happening to his little girl. Another thing that I find like sickening is that he actually met Paige's parents. He met, he met Paige's mom and he wanted, he was telling them that he wanted to support them and be there for them and even offered Paige's mom to come over to his house so they could talk about Paige. So they can talk through things and he can help her through things. And Paige's mom found this really, really odd because it's not like they were friends or anything. I said, you know where he stays, right? I go to his house and um, I, I, I said to my husband, the long I says, Maybe he was going to, maybe so I was kind of realising that he's done something, he was going to... Do the same to you. Uh, uh, that, if I had, cause normally I would have went, but I was like, I've got no reason to go, but if I had went around, then you just don't know. There is not a lot of public video and stuff on John Lehman's interviews um, and interrogation, but I know that he did stick to his story. He said that Paige went in to buy a sandwich and then she left. She was normal, she left, but they kept you know, pressing him saying that there is no footage of her leaving your shop. So there's no footage of her actually in your shop either because um, you tampered with it. So there's no footage of her ever leaving your shop. So something obviously happened inside of that. The police went over to the other store that John was seen running into and he bought garbage bags, leech and antibacterial wipes if that's not suspicious. On September 5th, 2016, this was six months after Paige's murder, John pleaded guilty to mur murdering Paige and he said that his reasoning for killing her was because Paige came into his deli that morning and she was getting a breakfast sandwich. It was just the two of them. He was making her a sandwich and she was talking about work and how she didn't like her job. She didn't wanna work in her, in the salon anymore. She wasn't happy, she didn't wanna, Want to be there anymore so she's looking for another job which side note can't be true because she literally wanted to do that for the rest of her life so this was actually like a an opportunity for her to be working in a salon at such a young age and um you know building that credibility and everything for herself for her future career so makes no sense at all but he didn't know Paige. he didn't know that that's what she wanted to do so he thought that this would make sense so john said why don't you fill out an application and you know, I'll bring in for 
uh, in an interview and per that how that interview goes I'll I'll hire you and he said why don't you come back and fill out an application so he brought her to the back of the deli and he was watching her fill out the application and he saw that she was only 15 years old and he let her know that he wasn't going to be able to hire her at just 15 years old he, he was he's not allowed to do that so john claims that Paige got really upset at this and angry and that she threatened him that if he if he didn't offer her this job if he didn't give her this job she was going to claim that he touched her and John has a brother, a twin brother, who is actually a registered sex offender. He raped a woman and John said that he immediately thought of that and thought of all the things that his brother has to go through, being on the sex offender list and not being able to find a job and how it that completely ruined his life. John said that he kind of snapped. He got really scared and he just, he couldn't deal with that so he felt he needed to stop Paige from ruining his life he grabbed a knife and he started to stab her now Paige's mom does not think that this is the truth at all like I said Paige loved her job it was a great for her resume and just experience for her because that's what she wanted to do when she got older so she loved her job she wasn't going anywhere and her mom said that's not in her personality to threaten someone like that she didn't naturally get that angry over something like so small like that and she she would never threaten someone in that way it just wasn't in her to do that so to this day like no one really knows why john lehman killed Paige. it's believed but not confirmed um that when john lehman left that day with Paige's body in the garbage bag in the back of his car he went home he went directly home and he put the garbage bag in his shed in his backyard and he continued the weekend with his family and they believe that on monday he took the garbage bag out of his shed and took her body to where she was then found before john's trial there was a lot of rumors going around in that area in that town no one really knows how it got started but i mean Rumors get started all the time. They were suggesting that Paige and John were having an affair together. And of course this was looked into. There was no record of them socializing in any form at all. Nothing on social media accounts, his or hers. There was nothing in their phones. Like there was literally no conversations outside of that shop. Um, and she was only there on the days that she had work to get a breakfast sandwich and like in and out quick. There was nothing um, pointing in the direction that they were having an affair of any type, any type of relationship at all, other than her just going in to buy a sandwich. There was no emails, no texts. No emails, no texts. There was nothing to confirm that there'd been any communication. The police had to investigate it because it's, they look for reason really. Um, and they had to kind of go look through emails, any social media, any ir irregularity, run about the shop and stuff. And sh she was always just in and out. She got a roll every morning and out and went to work. So there was no, it was as if she hung about there trying to get a hold of him. And they said there was nothing to suggest otherwise. And the papers never printed that? No. It was also said within that rumour that maybe she was pregnant and that's why he felt like he needed to kill her. And an autopsy would have showed if she was pregnant and she wasn't. So that's just, that rumor makes no sense at all. On October 12, 2016, John Lehman was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 27 years. No weapons were ever found and John never said what he used exactly. Two months after the sentencing, John appealed. He wanted his sentence to be reduced due to it being excessive. They actually won. The court agreed and reduced his sentencing to life in prison with a minimum of 23 years instead of the 27. In May of 2017, Paige's mom and her husband welcomed a baby girl and they named her after Paige. Her name is Penny Margaret Page, and Paige's mom, Pamela, has vowed to finish Paige's bucket list. So she has been checking off things that Paige always wanted to do in her life, her own little bucket list, and her mom is determined to finish every single one. Some of them are visiting New York, visiting Barbados, getting a tattoo, learning to drive. Every single year, they buy Paige Christmas and 
birthday presents and then they donate all of them to different charities with it which i think is amazing that's such a way to honor her and just let her live on forever i think that's it's amazing they also started pages promise and and this is a self-defense class to young people and counseling to anyone that lost someone in a very sudden way it doesn't have to be the way that Paige was murdered but if anyone that's grieving from a sudden loss of someone can get help through Paige's promise there even was a viral um trend going on that people were doing a pout for Paige, where they would um do the pouty face in like for a picture like she always did and they were doing like hashtag pout, pout for Paige. They just they're doing tons of different things to keep her memory alive and just honor her in every way that they can and i i think that's amazing let me know what you think of this case um how it makes you feel and i just it's really frustrating when i mean there's no reason there's no reason t for someone to kill someone like that right um it doesn't make it right but you want to know why you want to know the like what made you do that because obviously she wasn't threatening him she didn't want to leave her job and get a job with him and threaten his life um i would just i always wanted to be like a homicide psychologist because i just i want to like pick their brain like what happened in that moment and i don't know i don't know but i wish i did let me know what you think in the comments or if you know anything else about this case leave them in the comments below and like always you can give me uh, case suggestions all you want in the comments or email them to me i love it and um make sure you give this video a thumbs up subscribe i am really thankful for the new subscribers that i got like this past two weeks i'm very happy with it thank you so much for following and supporting me and um hit the bell notification. It will let you know every single time I upload a new video, which is every week. I'm very sorry about last week. I just, I was very sick. Um, so thank you so much for giving me your time and have a great day.